Josh Roach works under two of the best coaches in the country. Now he's the head coach, Tabor College. We're going to talk some Blue Jay basketball. Cascade Hoops Talk starts right now. Coach Josh Roach, he worked at uh, USA the last few years. Prior to that, he worked with Kevin Burton. As you know, two of the best coaches in the NAI, guys who know how to win. Coach uh, Josh Roach now, he's bringing his skills to Tabor College. Uh, he's going to compete there in that tough Kansas KCAC conference. He's got his uh, uphill climb this first year. He's only bringing one senior back, but he's out hitting the recruiting trail, and uh, he's determined to build a culture, a winning culture there at Tabor College. Let's take a listen to Josh Roach, head men's basketball coach, Tabor College. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Hey, I got uh, Josh Roach on the phone. He's the head men's basketball coach at Tabor Blue Jays. Thanks a lot for being on the show, coach. Hey, thanks for having me. You know, it's a, it's a nice to be able to take some time away and just, you know, like you said, talk, talk basketball for a little bit and just uh, enjoy some conversation. So thanks for having me on. Uh, you were on the show one other time. We talked uh, some data analytics while you were over at uh, USAO. And so I appreciate you coming on now as the head coach at Tabor. A little bit different role now. Yeah, um, I'm excited for it. It's definitely, like you said, a little bit different. It's um, learning a lot on the fly, just uh you know, as everybody always tells you, you know, you think you're prepared and then you hit the ground and you're like, okay, I didn't know about this or that. And a lot of it's learning school policies and, and the people at the school, building relationships with the people you're going to be working with every day. So it's, it's definitely been, been a lot, but it's, it's been fun so far. You know, I want to talk about uh, Tabor Blue Jay basketball, uh, but uh, we got to talk a little bit about how you ended up there. Uh, you've been around a little bit. You were just at USAO. Chris Francis, one of the best coaches around. Uh, you've worked under Kevin Burton. Uh, just talk about what you, what are the key things as an assistant with different programs that you bring to Tabor? Uh, so, you know, both um, coaches bless me with the ability to kind of look at things through a head coach light as far as on the court and off the court. Like they, they were ones that they let me coach on the court. Um, and we would go through practice segments and from day one, it was like, you know, this is, this is your segment. You, you handle this and everything. Um, and then just teaching, teaching a lot as, as you know, the small school level is we were kind of a, a master of all roles. Mm -hmm. We're, we're advisors. We're, um, you know, when they're, when they're having problems, they call us when, um, they're struggling in class. We set them up with tutors, you know, just different things like that. Understanding, you know, eligibility, understanding academics, understanding all the different roles as well as the things on the court. And, and, and both were, um, they allowed me to do those things. And then just, you know, being with Chris for longer, it just, he just, gave me more and more every every year uh, on the plate as far as hey if you want to be a head coach these are things that you need to start thinking about looking at and everything and just allowing me to always have my voice in things not saying it needs to be a certain way like if you're going to be a head coach you do it this way because as you know uh, when we become a head coach you have to find the best way for your voice to come out so um just doing the things like that that um uh, you know, a lot of people, when they think they want to get into coaching, they think it's just what they do on the court. And there's mm -hmm. there's so many different things, building relationships and talking to uh, donors, talking to um, fans, talking to community, you know, just doing things like that and, and coming up with ideas to get the kids more involved and everything. So they were just uh, very blessed to have guys that, that always saw the whole picture of things guiding me. I think an, another key, you know, at USAO, it has a strong winning culture, not just in basketball, but they win, you know, and you, and I'm assuming you bring that with you, that mindset. And it's not just yeah. the games, right? It's, it's the whole culture that goes with that. Yeah. We, we talk a lot in recruiting about, you know, like, Hey, every, every sport here is, is in some of its more successful times. And I mean, you know, softball and baseball go to the national tournament. 
Um, the first couple of years I was there, volleyball had their best years they ever had. Soccer, men's and women's both had uh, players come through who were the best players that have gone through USAO at the time. So it was like, you know, we're talking recruiting and like you said, everybody wins and, you know, everybody is has that same goal. So like when you look around on campus, you're you're getting to experience uh, people that they're going through the same thing you're going through just in their sport. And so everybody kind of celebrates each other. Everybody kind of um, is there for each other during during the, the rough losses and tough stretches and things like that. And, you know, men's and women's basketball both were successful. So, you know, we had every day just being being next to each other with conference games and stuff and having that. And that's something I, I look forward to here, our women's program is very successful um our softball program baseball programs have been very successful soccer's been good so um you know and just so there's more sports here I, i've gotten to know our football coach really well and he's he's a legend around here so do we just we, we sit and talk quite a bit and I, I enjoy getting to soak in that knowledge from everybody but you know even talking and recruiting here it's like I think it's 83% is what they said of the, of the students here are athletes. And it's like, you know, wow. you, you, you look left and right in the classroom and, you know, odds are both of those people are, are <laughs> going through what you're going through. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not, you know, if, if you're the one sitting in the classroom, who's here for, uh, for something else, you know, um, unfortunately they're kind of the, the, the odd man out. But then that's what we talk about too, is let's make them, like, let's go celebrate them and whatever they do. Maybe they're a performing arts person and you're their friend. Like, no, it's important for us to show up to, to their shows, too, because you want them at our games. Exactly. And so just building that community. Early in your career, one more background question. You were a director of basketball operations. Um, I worked at a basketball academy. I was director of basketball operations there. It was, yeah, so it was a, a place in Evansville. It was Christian-based. And um, the the director of it, he, he was very much... Uh, he wanted to use the the faith base and everything to kind of help people grow their game of basketball. And we had a volleyball academy too. And um, we kind of worked out of some local gyms in Evansville and we did personal training and we did, uh, you know, different leagues and things like that. And it, it, to be honest, you know, it, it's what you see a lot of now. I don't think it was as, as common back then, but um, with personal trainers and stuff, you see that everywhere nowadays, it seems like. Yeah. And, um, but you know, it, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was where I really got to, uh, really learn my, my coaching chops as far as, you know, Hey, you've got kindergartners through second graders playing a game. And then two hours later, you got seventh graders through ninth graders playing a game. And then the, the next day you got a, a little preschool class and, you know, just different stuff like that. So it was really just, uh, 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 all around, um, setting up leagues, setting up training, setting up different things. Um, talking with the gym, making sure times are good and stuff. So it's not it's not what you think of as far as director of basketball operations with a with a college team, but you know it's definitely you learn to multitask and you learn yeah. to have things organized. Well, that's important eh? when you start having to set up travel and get here, get there, hotels, meals. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk some uh, Tabor Blue Jay basketball. Uh, so we've only got one starter coming back. Um, he, uh, Caleb Crane, he's coming back. Um, he transferred here from Xavier, Louisiana mm -hmm. last year. Um, so he'll be, he'll be the lone starter. We've got a couple guys that their freshman year, they played quite a bit. They didn't get as many minutes last year. Um, one actually was, was recovering from, uh, an ACL his late in his freshman year. And he just never said, he said, never really felt fully healthy last year and just didn't get in a flow. And then we have one um, that worked up off the JV last year and then tore his ACL. So really as far as, as guys that I've seen a lot of tape on and everything, there, there's one guy, you know, the rest of them are, um, you know, like I said, they had their freshman year and, but to see where they've grown to now, we're going to do a lot okay. of evaluating early and, and, and go with a, uh, go with a, uh, just seeing, you know, how they mesh together, how certain guys go together, just let them, let them all kind of naturally kind of grow that chemistry and, and we'll evaluate and see what's our best options, you know, from that. So Caleb is a senior, played a ton of minutes last season. Uh, is that a guy you can kind of build around? Yeah. I mean, he's a leader. He's he, the, from the moment, the first conversation I had with him, the, the first answer he talked 
gave me from a thing. I was like, you want to be a coach in your future, don't you? And he's like, you know, I, I, I'm a business major, but I thought about it. And that's what he, you know, he definitely has that in him. And that's, that's great to have out of, out of a point guard is somebody who wants to be a coach, somebody who thinks like a coach and, you know, just talking the game with him and everything. I think that, you know, he's, he's definitely a leader. He's definitely someone everyone likes. When you come on campus, everybody raves about him. He works in our admissions office, and they tell me every, every day how excited they are to have him back and everything like that. What attributes did you notice in him that made you assume he wanted to coach? Uh, just, you know, the, talking the game, it wasn't, it wasn't talking like, Oh, did you see this player that play? He talked, you know, more specifics. He talked about like, Hey, when this happens, this, these are things we can do. Give me the background of, of the team last year and, and how they meshed and how they, how, when, when things were, were tough, this is what they, how he would kind of get them out of it or talk with them. Um, certain guys, you know, he knew, he, he, he knows, what guys you can talk, um, you got to you got to pump up and talk positive to. What guys you can kind of like get on to a little bit more because they, they they feed off of that stuff and just you know he he has a good feel for for people. He has a good feel for how to build a relationship with people and and you know everybody, all the guys on the team like they they love him. Even talking to to the returners coming back, like they're all excited about him being back and everything, and they just. Um, just like mm-hmm. I said, just a great person as far as when you talk to him and, and it's more than just basketball. We talk to like, you know, when I'm a big person of, on you come, you come to leave a legacy and, and that means more than just what you do on the court. Like the fact that the admissions office is saying how much they, they enjoy being around him. Like that's, what's important to me is when you leave here, people are going to remember you remember the impact you had while you were here. So have you been, uh, have you been out and hit the recruiting trail? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I did go to one AAU event this summer, but even when I was there, I was like just trying to fill this year's roster. It was like I, I definitely um, are building the connections and everything for for our future classes, but I, I'm I'm trying to get this class finalized mm-hmm. and, and figured out. And so it's been it's been a lot of late nights, a lot of uh, time in the in the office. Uh, so my my grad assistant, Coach Gager, is back on campus, and and he's, uh, you know, I have to tell him to go home. He's he's one that he'll, he'll sit in the office and help me with things, and it's like, Coach, like you need to go get some rest. I don't care about, you know, what I'm thinking right now for me, but I I, I would feel bad if if you spend the rest of this week, you know, behind on sleep and everything. But he's here. He's helping. Um, Coach Gombos is. We just we just got everything finalized with him. He's trying to find a a place to live here in town and then he'll be here. He'll be out this week to help with move in. And we've got a little clinic, a free clinic for our youth going on on Wednesday. And so he'll come out with that. Then he'll go back and pick up all his stuff and, and, and move back out. So, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's definitely a lot of, a lot of late nights trying to figure things out and work the it's, it's a little different with the JV and everything than it was at USAO. So trying to work all the angles of, you know, if, if this happens, these are the routes we take. And, you know, if we get a yes over here, then what's what's the next step over there? And yeah, so just a lot of a lot of uh, problem solving, I guess, is the best way to say it. Well, getting uh, Coach Gombo, as you mentioned, Mike Gombo's just uh, announced as your lead assistant. Uh, he has a really good background, comes from Northwood. Uh, he also has, was at William William Woods uh, working with Charles Belt. So, you know, he knows the business uh, that should help out getting him on board, huh? Yeah, yeah, it definitely, um, you know, like you said, he's got the good background and he actually um, just, you know, some of the, some of the guys that were, have been at Tabor, he had a previous relationship with for recruiting at, at William Woods. And so he kind of, you know, gets talking with them and like, what are the things you enjoyed about Tabor and everything? So um, he's got a good background, but he also has the the connections to kind of quickly adapt to uh, life here in, in Hillsboro and, and figure things out and help us out. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, at Northwood last year, just talking with some of the guys that, that they were looking to bring in and, you know, building off of those. And so we, we've talked to a couple and we're just trying to figure out, you know, best route. The biggest thing, and, and you hear it all the time, fit is so important. And so with this limited, limited time we've had to recruit, it's, it's like hyperdrive of trying to figure out if if they would be a good fit for Tabor, but more importantly, if Tabor would be a good fit for them. Like I, I we tell guys, 
I want your decision to come here to be one you'll never regret. And if, if you know, if you're talking to a kid and you know, like they're just not going to enjoy the, the lifestyle here or whatever, and you, you convince them otherwise, well, they're going to regret that decision. So we really try to, to dig into those things. And, you know, even though, even though it's on hyperdrive, it's, you try to get as much information as you can and, and figure it out. And, and hopefully we don't, we, we can live up to that. They don't regret any decision they make to come here. The best advice I heard from a guy is his mother told him, go to some, go someplace where you'll be happy even if there was no basketball. Yeah, and, and to be honest, the, the phone calls with the guys coming back, I had two or three of them tell me, like, Coach, even if, even if basketball was over, I would want to come back to Tabor. That's how much they enjoy it here. I think the school, um, what really drew me in, in the process was – you know, we they talk about I, I talk about making it something you know you don't want to regret. I feel like that's the, the administration here altogether. Like it it's they want to make it a life changing decision to come here. So they're very involved with that and the the community is very involved with that. And so like our our professors are big about getting getting you internship opportunities and things like that in the summer when they can and oh, getting you um, you know, ready for life after college because you know at the NAI level you know, we want them to go as far as they can with basketball. And the way I, I, I've I've started saying it because, you know, everybody has their, their hoop dreams is like even if your wildest dreams came true and, and you, you live basketball as long as you can. I mean, everybody thinks LeBron is the oldest man on earth and he's only 40 years old. <laughs> That's true. You know, Coach, you're right there in Hillsboro, Kansas. You're about, whoa, half hour north of Wichita. 15 minutes east of I-35. Where do you recruit mainly? Where are you looking? Well, um, you know, as far as there, there's a lot of talent in Kansas. And, and so far, um, looking for for future classes and everything, that's that's where we're going to hit the ground run. And we're going to develop as many relationships here in Kansas as we can and, and really try to find those guys. I think with the way the, the recruiting world has shifted, uh, you know, a lot of these local kids a lot of the high school kids are, are kind of getting overlooked nowadays and mm -hmm. um you know i understand it especially at the, at the higher levels is like you want proven guys you know you're getting you're getting paid a, a lot at if you're at a at a d1 that you want proven guys that are going to keep you getting paid so i understand that route that they take but for us we have to we have to adjust and see well you know the, the, there's there's high school kids that maybe we didn't used to be able to get at an ai level that I think they're going to start seeing that fit is more important than everything. And they're not going to be chasing a D one as much. And so we'll get those guys and, and we'll, we'll look and see, you know, the way I, the way I see it, you know, you look at free Hardeman this year, they're, they're, they're two sophomores. Like if you come and you play so well that in two years from now, a D one is, is wanting you, that means we, we probably had a good shot to win a national championship or, or go deep in the national tournament. So I'm not, I'm not above that. My job is why you're here to make that a hard decision for you to leave. And, you know, so we're going to look at that and, and look at the high, the Kansas kids. Um, you know, I'll look back at since Oklahoma is still close, kind of the connections I've made there. But uh, as far as like, especially this year, wherever, wherever we can recruit from it's national, like get, get in the portal, talk to guys. Um, but you know, we'll, I, I like to have the ability to pull from, a lot of places, but I know Kansas is going to be, is going to be the number one and me being from Indiana, I'm you know biased in Indiana basketball. So I know that the kids there, they also understand the game well. So I would love to, to get back into the pipeline there and, and pull some kids, um, you know, and just uh, as far as like transfers and stuff in goal to me is not building a team out of the portal every year. Mm -hmm. It's, filling in the filling in the holes and filling in the gaps or maybe finding a piece or two, you know, but if you, if you have kids that want to stick around and enjoy it, like you said earlier, they enjoy the school so much that they'd stay even, even though basketball is not there. Well, then, then you have continuity and you have guys that are, are growing in your program and you're just having to find a piece to fill it. You're not having to find, Oh, well, we had six guys transfer out and we got to We got to go get six new guys in the last minute. That's what most coaches are trying to do is, you know, just use that as a, you know, fill your gaps. I don't know. Some teams, I don't know. Some teams kind of live on transfers, but I think most programs are kind of hybrids. They want to bring in guys, keep the culture, but you, there's, 
you need JC guys to fill the cat fill the gaps. I mean, you got to sometimes you need guys bigger, stronger, been around. Yeah, and and you know the, the beauty of basketball and really any sport, but is there, there's no one way to do it that's most successful. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, especially at our level, and and I have no like I'm not saying it's the wrong way to go get transfers. It's just that my the way I coach, the way I enjoy my life, like that's the, I want to build, and I'm, yeah. I'm a big process oriented guy, and so. You know, I know, I mean, let's, let's call it like it is. Chris Wright is phenomenal at like getting a bunch of transfers every yeah. year and getting and Kevin Burton was a in. master at it as yes. well. Yeah, he yeah. was too. Yep. And, and, you know, there's, there's props to that. Like, that's the one thing everybody used to talk about Calipari is like people didn't realize with him, like these guys are getting a bunch of guys and getting them to mesh chemistry wise exactly. right away. Exactly. You know, yep. And that's, that's what, what Chris and Kevin were, were both phenomenal at is, yeah, they might have, six seven eight new guys every year but by the end of the year like those guys are, are as close as they've been together like they've been there for five years together so. yep i agree coach shifting gears a little bit kcac uh has had a boy it's really had a phenomenal few years here oklahoma wesleyan has has always been tough but they just keep getting tougher kansas wesleyan southwestern evangel was in uh, kansas city last season Ottawa, McPherson, St. Mary. Just talk about that KCAC and how good you're sleeping at night. <laughs> well, um, you know, it is, it's such a good conference that it does make sleeping at night knowing that you're not lying to recruits or anything better because when I tell them, like, it's one of the best conferences in, in the NAI, and, you know, a lot of conferences can stake that claim, and, and it's true. So we try to we try to talk about why those things are. Like you said, there four teams made the national tournament last year, um, you know, and Vanjo went to the lead eight. I think it was Oakley went to the Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just we, you know, we have that year in and year out that the, the top teams are going to go to the tournament and, and every one of them have a, a chance to make a deep run. Um, you know, it's, it's no, it's no joke from, from, I think the top eight make the conference tournament from one through eight. Like those, those teams are all tough. It's, it's going to be a battle of a year as far as conference play. And to me, that prepares you for the national tournament. And that's why these teams can make a deep run when they get to the national tournament. I mean, Evangel wasn't, I think they finished fourth in the conference last year and they went on that run because they were well prepared from what they, the ups and downs they went through in conference play. And, you know, that's, that's what, yes, it's going to be a battle. Yes. It's going to be a lot of long nights preparing and, and what, where's our, where's our edge against this team versus another team. But in the long run, I, I like that because I know as we learn those things and as we adjust and we get better at, at okay, you know, hey, when Coach is talking about this team and, and we've seen him, like he, he's telling the truth. So now when we get in the, the tournament and we talk about a team we hadn't seen, then I can I can call back on, well, remember this this conference game we had. It's, it's a lot like that. Like I fully trust it'll it'll have us prepared and have us matured through a lot of adversity ready if, if we if we build the program to where we want to go to where we're making the national tournament and and then that way we're ready to go on runs in the tournament well you haven't posted your whole schedule but uh, you and i were talking before we started i see you're going over to orange city uh, november 1st uh, gonna take on northwestern uh, that is a brutal place to play uh, you'll get tested there who else are you going to play in the preseason so uh, right now we're we're playing um, Doan at home, and then uh, we're going to Phoenix. Um, this is over Christmas break, okay. so we're going to play. Uh, we're supposed to play. It's I think it's Nelson, Arizona now, and then Cal Maritime while we're out there. Um, and then I'm still looking for two games. Um, we we normally have a Tabor Classic, and the men's and women's both play two games, and it's just kind of it didn't get uh, filled on the men's side. I, I've I've been trying and and you know, everybody's schedule's kind of done so we just haven't had the opportunity to have someone that has two games open and so um so yeah i'm still trying to find two um to figure out what to do there and so uh, coaches I, I if think, you if you need a game get a hold of coach roach 
<laughs> yeah, I think that that to me that's something that I would love to, you know, yeah, we're we're probably going to have to come to you this year, but um if if you want to come to our classic next year and part of the return game, we can we can get you two games next year. So, um yeah, like you said, hopefully shameless plug that we can get that schedule filled, but um, but yeah, uh, as far as preseason, that's that's all we've got right now. We will play uh, Newman in an exhibition game, which is D2 down in Wichita. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go play uh, Central Missouri in an exhibition game as well. How are they treating you at Tabor? Oh, it's it's definitely um, you know, the small town feel. It reminds me a lot of growing up where the city I grew up in, little, little Washington, Indiana. So oh, a okay. uh, small town feel and it's uh, – you know, just a lot of lot of connections. They they really care about Tabor. It's it's been great. Um, you know, you got people calling all the time, wanting to take you to dinner, wanting wanting to do uh, different things, come pop in the office and talk and things like that. So, you know, it's been really good. Um, really building a lot of connections with the the current coaches here. It, it, it seems that um, people that that when they graduate from Tabor, they want to stick around. There's a strong alumni base and, and a lot of people that work he here went here. Um, so getting to know, getting to know the people that know Tabor from back in the day, getting to know the people that know Tabor in the last five years, our athletic director, Jeff Brewer, he's been the softball coach here for five years and he's really uh, built something up there that, um, I, I can pull a lot of knowledge from him just to understand. He gets, a, he gets a lot of kids that, goes out to California. So his, my interview, he, we talked and then he immediately left and went to Vegas to Arizona to California, just recruiting and stuff. So, you know, getting to know him as far as, uh, finding where to go to find different areas where, where kids are going to fit in here. Um, like I said, our football coach has been here for years. He's been, he's in the hall of fame. And so I've got to talk to him a lot and just understand a lot. Our, our, uh, Dean of enrollment. Now he's, he's transitioning over to that. He's been the men's soccer coach here for years. He actually played basketball here under his dad, um, Grant Brubaker, his dad is Don, um, legendary coach here. And, you know, so just getting to know what, what things were like back when he played here. Um, and then, uh, the, the athletic director that actually hired me, he's now in, um, charge of the parks and rec department in the city, but he had, he had gone to school here. He had been a, uh, a, a JV coach while he was still a student here. He had been an assistant coach on a team that made the final four. So just really getting to know the, the background and the, the history of here and getting to know the people and why yeah. they care so much about Tabor. It's been a lot of fun. And, you know, when you, when, when you want to hear about that stuff, they definitely want to, to continue to have the relationship with you because they're excited that you feel like they feel like you care about getting them back to that. So your SID, Nate Howard, he's a friend of mine. I've gotten to know him at the national tournament the last few years. Uh, he always helps me out back there. So I know he's a pretty good guy too. Hey, you're from Washington. That's where, you know, Bryson Graver and point guard over at Grace. Uh, he went to uh, Bar Reeve high school there. Yep. So, so I went to, to little Washington Catholic in, in Washington. Um, there's two high schools in Washington, Washington Catholic and Washington, the Washington hatchets. So Washington Catholics one a, we would always get, um, dismantled by bar Reeve in the, in the <laughs> postseason tournament. But yeah, so yeah, he's, um, he's a very good player. Very good. Uh, man, I, I, I see, I saw him play in high school and just the, the passes, like, there's not many high school kids that already understand passes that he was already able to make. So, yeah, but um, my, my sister actually for when I, when I was in college, she lived in Montgomery, which is where Bryson's from. So, you know, very familiar with that area. He's a, he's a great player. Um, that's a great school. They, they, they pump out kids that know the game very well every year in and year out. They, they're kind of like, like here, what I talk about with Tabor, how the people that graduated from here come back at, at Bar Reef, like people that were really good in basketball or any sport there, yeah. they tend to stick around and then their kids come through. And then so ah, now they're okay. they stay really good. So. Yeah. Bryson, I, uh, I might be wrong here. I think he was the top assist guy in Indiana high school history. If I remember right. Yeah, uh, you're probably you're probably right on uh, that. So. Anyway, yeah, he had a great, a phenomenal high school uh, career, and obviously not doing too bad at Grace either. Yeah, well, coach, yeah, it sounds like you're getting settled in. You're getting all ready for that KCAC conference. Uh, wish you the best of luck. What what is it going to take for the 
Tabor to really compete in that KCAC this season? I mean, we just got to get we got to get guys that that know how to play. It's it's a brand of basketball that I I, I say this with a grain of salt because I there it makes it sound like there's no athleticism, less athleticism than than some schools. You know, like um, like I said, Langston they get these D1 transfers and it's it's guys that you got a six five point guard instead of a, a five a six foot or six five eleven point guard. Right. But, um, you know, it's it's so in turn. You know, everybody, I think, in the KCAC kind of knows where they stand. And so they, they go out and they they play, all right, well, we have to run this play a little bit better because we've got to get get ourselves open off of it. Whereas, you know, sometimes when, when you're a little bit more athletic, it's like, okay, well, I can go I can go out and jump you even if this play doesn't work. So as a whole, I feel like, you know, the, the brand of basketball in this conference is really um, high IQ and, and, and they think strategy and everything like that. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good brand of basketball and to, to be around, you know, it's not, like I said, no knock on the other teams. And um, I mean, that they everybody can be successful in, in certain ways. And, you know, the, when you get those, those high level talents, like their, their tactics might be, um, you know, a little bit more defensive oriented and things like that. We got to be more full scale, everything oriented. I feel well, Coach, thank you so much for being on the show. Wish you luck uh, as you start the season here. Uh, let's plan on talking some more during the season, talk some uh, Tabor Blue Jay and some KCAC basketball. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. That's Josh Roach. He's the head men's basketball coach, Tabor Blue Jays. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Also, please like and subscribe this show wherever you watch or listen to it. It helps a lot. And if you have a question you'd like answered on the show, just send me a note at CascadeHoopsTalk at Gmail or just shoot me a DM on Twitter. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Enjoy your day. We'll see you next time. Yours truly, Billy D. Thank you very much for supporting our podcast. Please like and subscribe. Get out to your local NAI school because NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America.